Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Venator, a veterinarian with Purina here in St. Louis, Missouri. As a leader in pet nutrition and pet health, Purina is proud to partner with Tractor Supply to answer your pet owner's questions. That's a great question. Socialization is a very important part of puppyhood. And we find that pets that are well socialized tend to be less fearful, have less anxiety, and certainly may be less aggressive as they age. It's also wonderful to have a socialized puppy so that they can be just more relaxed and happy in your home. It's great for the puppy and it's great for you and your family. I think the key is really to start early with socialization and I applaud you for really being interested in this topic. Uh, when it comes to socialization, it's just another form of training. And when you think about training, I always say it's important to go slow and steady. You have to recognize that as you're training your puppy, you know, they can be very energetic, they can be very excited. You have to go in very kind of rhythmic, uh, slow process. What you want to do is start, start with some of the basics. You want to start with sit, stay, down, etc. And once you kind of knock those out, you'll see that your puppy is going to gain a little bit more confidence. They're going to enjoy that interaction with you. And ultimately, it's going to make your home um, a lot more enjoyable, not only for your puppy, but all the family members. Well, that's a great question, and I'm excited that you're interested in socializing your four-month-old puppy. It's very important to start at a young age with our puppies to get them into the routine of our lives and make sure that they have the behaviors that we want so that they can enjoy life and they can be great members of our family. So when I think about training puppies, I always talk about go slow and steady. Uh, when you're working with a puppy, a lot of times they can be energetic. So sometimes it's good to get their energy out before you start a training session. And then I often recommend just starting with the basics. Sit, stay, down. When you're training, it's really important to always use what we call positive reinforcement. We never want to use negative reinforcement. So what do I mean by that? Really, it's about praise. It's about affection. It's about showing love. and It's about rewarding the behaviors that you want to see. So it could be a lot of scratches behind the ears, a lot of good boys, a lot of voice inflection. And you'd be surprised at just that level of positive reinforcement, what it can do when you're training your puppy. We never want to use negative reinforcement or punishment. We don't want to use harsh words or loud words. We really want it to be a natural environment. You can also consider using treats. I always say treat responsibly, but you can go out and you can purchase uh, training treats. They can often be used as a great tool and a reward for the behaviors that you want to see in your puppy. If you do these things, your puppy's going to have a great life and it'll be a wonderful part of the family. That's a great question and it's one of the most common questions I get in veterinary practice. Is there a difference between puppy food and adult food? And the short answer is yes. Yes, there is. Um, puppies are growing and they're in that growth and development stage. And so they often require more nutrients. In particular, they require more protein and more calories compared to our adult dogs. So there is a difference in the caloric density as well as the protein and fat ratios. So when you're thinking about selecting a puppy food, you wanna make sure that you look for a few things on the bag of food. It'll say it is for puppy, it'll say for all life stages, or it may say for adults. So you wanna make sure that you're feeding the appropriate food for the appropriate life stage. The other thing I often talk to owners about is feeding for appropriate lifestyle. We all know that our dogs can be different from one another. When I think about my own Labrador Retrievers at home, I have three beautiful labs. Uh, Thatcher is my couch potato. His energy requirements are probably a little bit lower than Sailor, my, my sporting dog who loves to just run and has to be worked pretty much each and every day. Sailor is gonna have a higher energy requirement because she has a lot more activity. Um, the other thing you can then consider is as they age, you do, might, you do need to consider transitioning them potentially to a different food. As they move into the senior years then, we'll move to yet another formula. And that formula may be higher in protein, and may have a different caloric density. This is why I always recommend throughout your dog's life stage, you meet with your veterinarian, he and her and their staff can help you with the appropriate recommendation and make sure that we make any changes that are needed throughout the life of your puppy. Puppies and grass, a question we often get in the veterinary clinic. It's actually probably more common than you may think. 
We do have a lot of owners come in say my puppy's gnawing on the grass in the backyard. Normally it's not a problem. Uh, if you're not seeing a lot of vomiting or regurgitation, uh, you really don't have to be concerned. Uh, if you do start to see those signs, then you should call your veterinarian, go in, have them do a quick checkup, and, and just try to find out what's going on. I'm often asked, well, why do puppies chew on grass? Is it that they don't like the food? Is it that they're missing something in the diet? The reality is we don't really know as a veterinary profession why puppies like to chew on grass. We do have a number of theories. Uh, the first one is actually, and this may seem surprising, actually a behavioral issue coming out of perhaps boredom. Um, and so one of the things you can do to help maybe minimize the grass chewing uh, in the backyard is to make sure that your pet has appropriate enrichment and is exercised each and every day. Um, if you can get some of their energy out, that might help kind of with that boredom issue and with the grass chewing. The other two things that people often think about or have proposed as to why puppies like and dogs like to chew on grass is it might serve as a laxative, um, it might, uh, they're looking for some fiber in their diet, um, and, and, and they might just like the taste and the texture. And so things you can do in that case uh, it would be just to make sure that you're you know, treating them every once in a while appropriately. I'm a big fan of responsible treating. We don't certainly want to over condition our dogs. We want them to stay in ideal body condition. But I think if you do those things, if you think about getting them the appropriate amount of exercise, engaging them, taking them on walks, making sure they're part of the family, you'll probably see that grass chewing diminish.